Hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions and I'm delighted to be joined by Stuart McDowell today and really I'm excited to hear a bit more about the Vet TED and I, I, I have seen some of the content in an earlier discussion with us but I understand today, today is going to be the world premiere, the unveiling of, of part of the course. Um, so I'm excited to see that and learn more. So over to you Stuart. Thanks very much, Kenji. Uh, morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, and uh, as Kenji says, my name's Stuart. I'm Head of Innovation and STEM at City of Glasgow College. And uh, within that remit involves the uh, management of European projects through Erasmus+. Plus. Uh, and one project very close to my heart that I've been leading on for the last two years is the Vet Ted project, which is vocational education and training teachers embracing digital disruption. Uh, so I want to share with you a little bit about the project today. Um, share some of our uh, assets and tools that we've developed uh, and then take some questions. Again, we we're near the, the end of the project. Um, so we're now starting to see a lot of our tools come to fruition. Our self-assessment tool has been up for quite some time now. Uh, and we are now really at the piloting stage or probably beyond the piloting stage to start rolling this out across Scotland, uh, the UK and also across uh, the EU. So I've just dropped a little poll link into the chat there. Uh, if you bear with me, I'll share my screen and we'll get started. Um, I want to start this morning by um, really asking asking you a question to be perfectly honest so what i'd, I'd like to, to start off with is if, if you would all be so kind just to um click on that link and let me know uh, that you can access it all right uh, i will make this available to uh, I'll, I'll make the presentation sorry available to you uh, afterwards um so what i'd like to do is just ask you a very simple question um and that is uh, do you feel confident um, and identifying the most suitable digital technology to improve your teaching practice and engage students. So for those that perhaps haven't used Poll Everywhere before, you should be prompted to put your name, hit submit, and then you'll be asked to just provide a question. They uh, provide an answer, sorry, to the question. See, confidence is growing even as we're online this today. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to assume everybody's managed to uh, drop a, a, an answer in. It, that's not a surprising result, to be perfectly honest, but I think the key thing to take away um, from that is the fact that not all teachers do feel confident in identifying the most suitable te digital technology, and that's what VetTed's all about. It's, it's about engaging those that perhaps don't have the confidence um, to try and build confidence, but it's also about getting those people that do have the confidence to share and engage with those that perhaps need a little bit of support and, and development. Um, so the, the project itself is, is really about acknowledging the fact that we can't assume that people um, are automatically or naturally, um, I don't know if you just came out of that, it's all right. Um, we, we don't assume that, that people have all the, the, the digital competencies or the competence to, to use the tools available to them. And actually one of the biggest challenges that we found is, is being aware of the actual tools that are available. Uh, there's so many of them. I'm, a, I'm from a marketing background, so I know that there's an extensive amount of platforms and tools out there. So it's trying to find the right ones. So the project tries to recognize that not everybody has the confidence to develop digital uh, learning. Uh, and it's a very prominent uh, topic at the moment, uh, given the, the, the the circumstances. Uh, so the project really aims to look at three things. One is to try and support the CPD of teachers um, right across the EU, specifically in a VET context, if, I, if I'm being honest, it does have applicability across upper secondary and perhaps even HE, uh, but we did focus our attention on VET. Um, secondly, it's to build a, a pathway, a skills pathway, sorry, in a resource library to try and increase learning within teachers. Uh, and also really just to ultimately improve improve the, the, the delivery of VET uh, through the, the better adoption of technologies um, that we're all experiencing and, and that's disrupting um, all our, our, our delivery. So there's seven partners in the project. Uh, we as City of Glasgow College are leading that, uh, but we have two Dutch partners, um, one from Germany, one from Slovenia, uh, one from the Czech Republic and one from the Basque country. Uh, and it's been a really interesting engagement uh, and discussion between all partners 
no matter where you go uh, across the partnership, uh, the challenges are very similar, if not the same. So it's a very transnational project and it has applicability right across the continent, if not the world. So that's why we feel that the, pro the programs uh, and the, the assets that we've developed may well have uh, a, a great opportunity to support development right across the world, because many of the challenges that teachers come up against are very similar no matter where you are. So what have we done? Um, really the four, four outputs that we've developed, uh, the first of which is a self-assessment tool. Very much the basis for any development must start from a recognition and a starting point of, of where you feel you are currently uh, situated within your, your own development. So the self-assessment tool really starts to identify the gaps and skills, perhaps the weaknesses, but also the strengths um, and teachers um, being able to identify the particular areas of which they need to try and develop. Um, the Letland programmes then obviously uh, complement the, the areas of, of development that have been identified. We, we have a web platform which essentially gives access to all our, our tools uh, and we started to collate a, 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 a selection of best practice case studies from across the partnership predominantly, but we would look to reach out to um, partners right across Europe uh, to share the, the, the best practice that, that they have in, in applying the digital tools that, that we are all perhaps becoming a little bit more familiar with. So sorry, I should say within this presentation, there are URL links to all the different assets uh, that I've been talking about. Um, if you just click on, on each of the little uh, nodes there. All right. So I want to start off with the self-assessment tool. Um, the critical part of the self-assessment tool is actually we're, we're, we're building assessments around three areas of competence. Um, so there's six assessments covering these subjects here, digital identity, security and data handling, alternative environments, digital education methodologies, um, digital education models and media rich content. And actually through a lot of discussion, what we've found as a team is in order to develop digital competence, it's actually about trying to develop personal and professional competence rather than specifically developing digital. It's almost as a sort of cause and effect if we develop the personal and professional we will realize uh, an improvement in, in digital competence. So we built the, the assessments very intentionally, very short, um, but they're all structured around a, a competency framework, which we developed, um, again, focusing on and reflecting on personal, professional and digital frameworks across uh, Scotland the Netherlands, uh, and Netherlands and the Basque country. So the self-assessment tool itself has, has got some uh, key features. Ultimately, it's about trying to improve the knowledge of teachers, not only in identifying the most suitable tools, but also be able to design, configure, uh, and more importantly, implement those within uh, the learning programs. Within the tool, you obviously access the assessments themselves, but you can retake them. Um, what we then have um, on completion of the assessments uh, our personalized resources attached to the particular answers that you've provided. Um, and you can gain access to those resources and your results. Uh, and I'm going to take you in and show you what that actually looks like in a wee second. Um, so there's a whole bunch of personalized resources and, and data available to you, which can be compared against other national averages. Um, so really the main component parts of the self-assessment tool are really the assessments themselves, the data that you have access to, and the resources uh, that we've gathered across the platform. Now there's over 200 resources available through the platform. Uh, and we're actually just finished our last, um, we've just finished, sorry, a, a, a second uh, collection of resources, which will be up probably in the next three to four weeks. So if we look at the actual tool itself, what we have uh, uh, is our dashboard. Uh, and on the left-hand side navigation menu, we can access our assessments, uh, all the resources, uh, eventually you'll be able to access the learning programs, uh, all of our case studies. And we are from, we are conscious of the fact that there's a lot of terminology and a lot of jargon contained within the, the subject area. So there is a, a full glossary there to give people a little bit of a, a, a kind of steer in, in some of the terminology that's being used. Uh, there's also a user guide, uh, at the moment only available in English, but this will be available in all national languages eventually. Uh, and again, within that guide, it just gives you plenty of um, uh, guidance, very simple guidance on how to access the platform, how to take an assessment, how to um, access the resources, how do you filter resources, um, and how do you access the other resources that are available throughout the platform. So just again, very simple um, picture, picture and text. 
step-by-step uh, -step guide into how, how we use the actual platform. So what does an actual assessment look like? So the assessments, uh, given the fact that I've obviously been in here already to take these, um, when you enter the, the, the platform initially, you'll, you'll obviously be able to, to take the, the assessment for the first time, but you can retake. Um, and we hope that people do. We hope that people continuously try and develop, come back uh, and try and improve their, their competence. So essentially, I'm not going to dwell too much on the questions themselves, but essentially what's happening here is we are assessing question, uh, competence sorry, on, on four levels of competence from novice through to expert. Uh, and it's very simply just a, a simple star rated system uh, answering each of the questions, clearly taking a slightly longer to read them than, than I'm doing right now. Um, assessments range between sort of eight questions up to a maximum of maybe 12. So again, we've intentionally kept them very short. Um, we don't believe people want to spend a huge amount of time um, answering the questions. Uh, sometimes actually not do they have the time to sit and answer a, a whole range of questions. So once you've finished the assessment, you'll be then presented with your results. Uh, the results page, really three key things here. First of all, the data. Um, so what we have here is we have a radar chart, which can be a, adapted to a bar chart um, to look at your own results. Um, but more importantly, what you can do is you can then compare the results to previous assessments that you've taken. You can also compare against national averages across all assessment completions for the UK, uh, the Netherlands or, or the past country or any other countries that are within the system. Um, so there's, a, a, I feel like, a, a barometer there of how you compare to perhaps other teachers across other countries. The second element is looking at the question of what do the results mean? So each individual uh, assessment that's completed will get a, a personalized uh, results uh, description, if you like, telling you what level of proficiency you're at. Uh, and more importantly, what's next for you? So what should you do next? Um, so perhaps, uh, sorry, for example, in, in the proficient level, uh, it's about trying to focus on trying to further apply your competencies, uh, perhaps engage with experts. Uh, and again, that's why the project is for uh, if you like newbies or, or perhaps less confident uh, practitioners as well as experts, undertake some additional training and development uh, and also engage with the resources that we have available. Okay, so we've got the data itself, we've got the description of, of what uh, the results mean. Uh, you can export that into a PDF, which can be downloaded. And again, just gives you a little explanation of which each of the proficiencies are. Um, and, and then the final part is the resources. So these are the resources that are specifically attached to the, the, the responses that you've given within this, the self-assessment. Within that, you can view the resource, uh, which will open up a new tab. Uh, you can leave a comment and provide feedback on a resource. I think there's, that's there for multiple reasons. One is to perhaps gather, uh, actually the main reason was to try and capture when links died or, or fell foul, people could report them. Um, but also if you feel there's a lot of value in a particular resource, leave a comment, let people know that that's something that's of, of real value. Uh, and then what there's also is you, you also have a star rating system where we can rate um, the, the particular resources in the system. Now, once we upload our case studies, of which we will, you'll start to see this V logo being used to represent the resources specifically developed by the project team. That's how you'll distinguish those um, between uh, our resources and, and if you like publicly available resources on the web. So the star rating is, is an important point because when we move into the actual full resource bank uh, of over 200 resources, same user experience, uh, but we then have the opportunity to filter those. Uh, we can filter by particular technologies that we're, we're applying. Um, you can filter by the particular minimum star, uh, star rating. So again, if you only want the best resources through uh, peer review, uh, you'll be able to gain, uh, gain access to them by just filtering on, on the, the, star, the minimum star rating. Um, you can also look at all the resources aligned to each of the individual learning programs, uh, and also if there's a particular um, format of, of resources that you're looking for, then you can find them in there as well. Okay, So a lot going on in the self-assessment tool, but ultimately it comes back to those three things of the assessments, um, the data available to you, and also the resource bank, which sits within uh, the system. So in terms of our learning programs, as I've said, we have uh, developed six micro learning programs. 
Um, and these programs will be hosted on our website, uh, www.vet-ted.eu. Um, and really the key point that we want to get across is we are creating learning experiences. So again, there's a, a, there's a bunch of stuff going on here um, across each of the six programs. Yes, there's bite-sized uh, learning content of which I'll show you in a wee second, um, but there's additional uh, resources fed throughout, including our case studies and our case study videos. Uh, and there's also YouTube playlists being used to underpin and collate or curate, sorry, um, all the best video content in, in that particular area. Um, so Kenji, this is the point of uh, excitement here for you. So we're now uh, live in the VetTed website. Again, we're still tinkering with uh, just some of the enrollment process and, and the process to get people to sign up. Now you will have to do a very short sign up name, email address, um, and then when you get, once you gain access, you can enroll on any one of the programs. You don't need to enroll on all of them. Uh, and essentially they're built in a, in a similar way. So all programs are built in a chapter uh, uh, structure with each um, chapter having individual components spread throughout. So this is the module that I developed, Alternative Environments. Um, and within that, there's three chapters, one covering technology enhanced learning kind of in a broader sense. Uh, and then specifically into what are some of the alternative environments we're using uh, and what are the benefits of those to uh, students and staff. So each component chapter, as you see, fairly straightforward. Uh, it's got its own um, box there. Uh, and again, you can just make your way through the program at your own pace. Um, each chapter, if you like, or each component has its own H5P quiz. Uh, again, that's just going to allow us to award digital badges at the end of the program. Uh, so if we take a particular element, we come in, each page will be the same as well. So what we have is we have a, a quote just to sort of start things off and, and sort of inspire people to, to think about that particular subject matter. Um, and then as we come through, we, we specify our, our learning goals and objectives for that particular lesson. Um, and then more importantly, uh, look at how do the particular technologies that we're talking about in that lesson uh, support uh, learning. So again, just given that sort of thought around, this is less about what are they, uh, we do talk about what they are, but more importantly is how and why should you use them as the really key component part of the learning program. So as I say, they're very, very short um, pages. Again, just giving a little bit of a definition of what we mean by the technologies that we're talking about. In this case, it's alternative online environments. Uh, and then where we can, we're building in case study content, explanations of where this is being applied. Um, and then we try and again, just complement that with some statistics of that particular area. Um, and as I mentioned before, we then have our H5P quiz uh, and then some sometimes uh, some, some FAQs that are being asked around a particular subject matter, all right? So if we move into the actual technologies themselves, we've got presentation and multimedia technology. For example, where we're just looking at all the different presentation, presentation technologies. Uh, we consider how those have developed over time, uh, just using a, a simple timeline. Uh, so there's different H5P components or interactive components built in uh, where we can as well. Um, but more importantly, it's about trying to offer alternatives and choices to teachers uh, and also give a, a platform where they can compare and contrast. As I mentioned before, I, I come from a marketing background in an area where there's thousands of platforms. Um, and coming back to my previous point around the personal and professional competencies, in order to try and adapt and use digital technologies, actually the identification of the most suitable platform is probably one of the key competencies that people need to try uh, and understand, defining a problem, evaluating platforms against their needs, all these types of things. So each of the pages, as I say, is very much built on the same premise. Um, and you work through all of the component parts right through and at the end you'll be provided with a, a digital badge um, which you can use uh, in a Badger account which so we're going to be incorporating the Badger platform for the use of um, digital badges. All right. So as I say, there's, there's loads of stuff in there between uh, curated videos, our own videos that we've created. We've pulled together some um, uh, of our own video content just based on some uh, blog posts and, and things like that. So um, that's the learning programs, Kenji. I hope it was worth, worth the wait. Um, so just to, to quickly finish off, um, 
In terms of the website, as I mentioned before, we've got all of our project outputs up there. There's a project brochure. There's um, redirects to our social media channels, which we've, we've had up and running through LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, and again, there's partner information up there. Uh, and as I said before, you'll be able to access not only um, the self-assessment tool, but you'll be able to access direct, um, directly. <laughs> Uh, you'll be able to access directly into the learning programs from, from that. So the final output of, of four is our digital case studies. So at the moment, we've got 13 case studies, uh, of which by hopefully by May, by the final conference, we'll have more than that. We're aiming for between 20 and 30 case studies, um, uh, all covering different various uh, technologies. Uh, the ones that we've got up, up there at the moment, we've got podcasting, we've got digital badges, We've got a few actually around VR and AR. Uh, we've got a case study on learning analytics. Uh, and again, all of those are available through our website, if you just bear with me. There we go. Um, so again, these can be filtered by particular technology or category uh, and by the partner who's created that. So again, within a particular case study, if we take construction manager, uh, you'll be able to find out a wee bit more about the particular technology or, or the platform that's been used. Uh, a little bit of a video, uh, six, usually about 60 seconds, some of them are a wee bit longer, just in terms of the tutor themselves explaining why they did what they did uh, and how they did it. Uh, and then uh, a kind of standard suite of, of uh, questions uh, and giving some guidance and support and how uh, they come up with the case study and more importantly, how they implemented that into their learning. All right. So uh, that to me um, gives pretty much all I want to say at the moment around the technologies. Um, please engage with us on social media. There's, we are, we're posting our case studies up there. We're posting the, the suite of the, the 200 resources we have. We're, we're weekly, we're, we're posting content. Most importantly, what happens next? What happens next is if an institution is interested in using the self-assessment tool, then I would ask that they reach out to me. Uh, and what we would then aim to do is we would then register that institution on the platform, which will then allow their teachers to register an account and attach it to, directly to the institution. And there's a couple of reasons why we're doing that. First of all, for the, for the data. Once, uh, once an institution is registered on the platform, they will be uh, allocated a center admin essentially, but someone who will have access to the back end of the system. And from that system, they'll be able to analyze user data results. They'll be able to compare and contrast against their institution's results, as well as other national averages, uh, very much as you saw on the results page there. So we're not doing an institution to institution comparison. We don't think that's a good thing to do at this particular point, but we are offering the opportunity to look at comparisons and benchmarking your institution against uh, nations across the EU. So if you are interested, please reach out. Uh, please share, uh, share uh, the project as, as far and wide as you can. Uh, and we do hope that the first suite of learning programs will come out, modules one, two, and three, uh, hopefully within the, the next couple of weeks. And again, we'll alert Kenji to when, when that happens. So if there are any questions, I'm delighted to take them. Um, and thank you very much for coming along this morning. Thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, and apologies for a couple of the interruptions that you experienced earlier on. So thank you. Not at all, Stuart. That 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 was excellent and a, and a brilliant insight into to what's on offer. And just just to reiterate, the the services is free uh, for for anyone, and it's just a simple requirement to to register and sign up, and you get access to all the content. Yeah. So as uh, my colleagues all know, as an Erasmus project, um, everything is free of charge. So the whole platform, SAP platform is free. All the learning programs are free. Uh, access to all the resources is, is free. Uh, and that won't change. Uh, there may be changes to the way that some of the partner institutions perhaps will use self-assessment. That's not to say that an institution couldn't take the platform and commercialize it. There's nothing wrong with that. But the VetTed platform, we can commit to the fact that it will always be free.
So the content there is available under uh, an open license and it, it's protected. That's excellent news. Fantastic. Okay, so we do have some time, um, about five minutes or so, uh, to just take some questions during this recorded part of the, the session. I can see I can see Walter has asked a question already in chat. Uh, so I'll, I'll just read this question um, from Walter. Uh, so Walter did ask, uh, are the Badger badges branded with the institution or the, the VET TED project? So everything, uh, everything related to the project will be branded VETED. So there'll be no mention of the institution itself. So the badger, or sorry, the badges uh, will have the all the data required for uh, to make them uh, open badge compliant. Uh, so it'll have the, the title, it'll have the skills that have been developed, um, <laughs> the um, award date, that kind of thing. But it'll be branded up Vet Ted Walter. It won't have any mention of something. Thanks, Stuart. Yeah. Okay. And the the platform on which this sits is are they is that funded for two years, five years? So the, the funding originally was for for 30 months uh, through Erasmus Plus. Now one of the things that we'll have to do in May at our final conference and our final transnational meeting is to create a, an additional partnership agreement as to how we'll sustain the project beyond yeah. the project completion date. So there will be an intention, absolutely intention, of extending the, the hosting of all the platforms. The website's hosted by Technica in the Basque Country, um, as is the self-assessment tool. Uh, sorry, that's a, that's a lie. The self-assessment tool is hosted by the developer at the moment, but it'll be moved to one of the partner institutions eventually. Um, and certainly, as I said, this project is pretty close to my heart. Um, sometimes there is a risk that Erasmus projects sometimes fall off the edge of a cliff once they're finished. Uh, I want to make sure that we do sustain the project. And if that means putting up some of our own cash, which won't be a lot to maintain the hosting uh, of the platforms, then we'll certainly look at that and make sure that happens. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, yeah. Walter. And it is, it is an excellent looking site and the resources, just the look, the simplicity, the consistency throughout, you know, gives it a really impressive professional feel. So uh, any other questions? I think we have time for just one last question um, before we end this recorded part of the session. I'm just going to leap in with one, obviously, <laughs> since I have the chance. So uh, one of the things that institutions have um, found challenging is the, the recent introduction in 2018 of the, the accessibility legislation that ensures that all of the digital content from the public sector, certainly in the UK, meets um, a fairly rigorous standard. So was that taken into consideration during the development of this project? I think I, I, always, uh, I always believe in being completely open and, and transparent. Accessibility was always considered. That specific regulation, perhaps not. So we wanted to make sure that obviously the, the content is accessible and it meets probably an initial accessibility guidelines. Um, but we've spoken to our learning technologies team who are, are going to take us through that pretty rigorous process to ensure that it actually all does. That's brilliant news. Excellent. Always good to end on a high note. <laughs> well, thanks for that, Stuart. Really appreciate that run through. And there's definitely a lot for us to investigate. Um, so thanks again. And thanks for joining this virtual bridge session. Until the next one, stay safe. <laughs>